Oh, thank you, Evans, for the opportunity. I think nothing surprises me uh, because, first, you are talking about MPP stronghold, which is Asante region. All the 47 constituencies, NPP is very strong in most of them, and Ejusu is part. So if there is a by-election and um, the, the person uh, we lost, and out of which we had a by-election, is from the party. Obviously, you realize that the party is going to put a strong showing, and uh, that is what is manifesting now. Yes, for Adiomi, what you are seeing also is a function of uh, uh, the work that he has done in the constituency and the fact that he has been a uh, three-time MP there. So he's a force to reckon with, and that is also playing out. But at the end of the day, if you recall yesterday, I did say that for a constituency such as this, there is always the dominant party model, which says that the party that is uh, uh, in, in power or the party whose um, constituency is what we are talking about is a stronghold. Always uh, people vote and block and then they vote massively to maintain uh, their leader. It, it, it doesn't matter the message or whatever, uh, but for a duo me, he belongs to that school of thought. They believe in what the rational choice model, who is competing, uh, what are uh, some of the policies he has done, for which reason there's a need for us to give vote to that person and all that. If the party is firmly on the ground, which MPP is, at the end of the day, you realize that the party will throw uh, the independent candidates away. But we have seen uh, at least uh, two fresh examples uh, in our minds. And that always serves as a guide uh, when we are looking at type of analysis, if you look at the issue of Formina and that of Bepai. Uh, so that gave, uh, you know, a Diomi some sort of what? Hope. And also against the backdrop that NDC did not contest and that a chunk of their voters are also rooting for him. And then uh, even in the course of the voting, we realized that even the 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 the, uh, the butterfly movement and the, the coalition is also uh, gravitating towards that party. So it's an interesting uh, dynamic that is going on. But at the end of the day, uh, the the dominant party model uh, is uh, you know defeating the rational choice, and the, is gradually emerging that the MPP will carry the day. Yes, uh, but but what about the gap though between? Adiomi's uh, number of votes and that of uh, Kwabana Boateng. As it stands now, 56 as against 42. And we're waiting to see what the remainder of the polling centres will do to that number. But if that's how it ends, what, how, what, how much are you reading to that? Yeah, when, if that, this score is to be maintained, then it gives you an indication that the MPP need to put in a lot because then it tells you that uh, if a Diomi is to uh, go and campaign heavy, or he should contest as an independent candidate for uh, the December election, is going to cause a stir there. Remember that M NDC last election, even though in March second, they pulled some substantial amount of vote, about fourteen thousand plus vote there. So yes, they have uh, some numbers there. Remember. MPP, NDC is not interested in winning if the opportunity avails itself, but it can be so. All that they are, interesting, they are interested in is to have uh, more votes there so as to show their, up their numbers to get the 30% and beyond. And you and I know that once NDC is able to clock about 30% from Ashanti region, then all things being equal, they are going to carry the day. So. All those bits and pieces, if they're able to put together, is going to help them. So a resource like this, if it stays, it tells you that the MPP need to do more. Mm. It means that uh, there is um, a salvo being fired at their background, and then they need to work it out the more. It also sent a message to the NDC that, hey, we can also come in and then also see whether we can show up our votes and all that. So it changes the dynamics straight away. Yeah, and of course, by the close of uh, the poll tonight, when the declaration is done, the expectation where we are now is that the MPP will win this. Now, if you are a duomi, you're obviously in this race. Will you be standing again on, in, in, on, in December, on December 7th? 
uh, in that particular race, you expect that the MPP, the NDC will be in a race too because they have a candidate, right, on the ground there. That dynamic will change. And, and many suggest that that will only play again in the favor of the MPP because the NDC guys will vote for the NDC candidate. In this particular race, chances are many of them were voting for a Duomi, right? So a Duomi would definitely get some votes from the MPP, but NDC will also take the votes. In the end, MPP still emerges victorious. Do, do you, how do you see this playing out uh, on December yes. 7? Yes, there is a sense in what you are saying. But Izzy, if you have this situation uh, maintained, that you maintain the status quo, then uh, a Duomi goes as an independent candidate. Obviously, where is he going to pull the vote from? Mm. Obviously, he's going to what, take some numbers from the NPP, mm. uh, maybe very little from the NDC, right? But remember that the dwindling of NPP votes is the trouble that the NPP doesn't want. Every vote counts if you really want to make impression in every part of this country. For Ashanti region, which is your strongest, uh, you know, or constituency, you need to put up a splendid performance, go beyond about 70% threshold, then you are making progress. So they will not want a Diomi to contest again, uh, if uh, that is possible, because the vote that a Diomi will obviously pull, will pull out of the MPP support base, and that will not uh, in your well for uh, the strength of the party come uh, 20, uh, uh, this year, December elections. So um, it's something dicey for them and NDC will also be very much uh, happy if they should see a Diomi coming back as an independent candidate. Then it means that, look, they also can put in a very strong showing if they are able to work, uh, work in such a way that they increase their margins there. And a Diomi is to contest and also take some of the votes is going to also affect uh, the, 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 the total number of votes that the NPP is supposed to uh, receive from that area. So, uh, all in all, uh, it promises to be interesting, provided a Diomi will contest again. If he will not, then obviously the seats uh, will fall back uh, to the MPP. Uh, and give me a comment on the incident that we've been reporting all day. Now that the police have been brought into the frame, the uh, EC has investigated it. This video that I'm pretty sure you've seen of the Kingsley Nyako what should happen now? Now the polls are over. We are yet to hear from Edomi how he intends to approach this. If anything, what we hear from his campaign team is anything to go by, he seemed to suggest, well, look, it's, it, we, we, this is something that has happened. We, we said it's going to happen. It's happened. Uh, and we, we, in essence, can't do anything much about it. But it has implications for the integrity of the poll, does it not? And, and how should this be handled going forward? Yes, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, this incident happened. Unfortunate in the sense that, look, this is MPP stronghold, and you are a member of the party. So um, there shouldn't be any attempt at even uh, doing something of a sort if you really want to uh, support them by providing food or whatever. Mm. Because you have been in this business for years, you know that these things are not allowed. Uh, the Electoral Commission has been voted with money to run its own program, and so is the political parties. They also have their budget, they run with that. If you want to provide something for uh, them, you make it open to everybody. But even that one, we don't want to welcome that because it creates an avenue for all manner of manipulation to take place. So, so for you to pull it out of your pocket, even if uh, it is not meant to influence anybody, uh, the fact that an envelope you know, flies in the face of what the whole table, and that is where the action was, uh, it, it raises an eyebrow, and that creates a problem uh, for uh, a contest such as this. Let us remember that in election, the slightest problem that you have uh, send shivers down the spine of people, and then you make them believe that, look, all is not well, and all that. And that can affect what the quality of the election. Imagine this happened to be the national election. I'm sure the story would have been different because you have players such as the NDC. Uh, the stakes will be more high than what we are seeing now, and that will create all manner of problems. Uh, I believe that going forward, 
what we have to do because it gives us food for thought that there should be reforms and that reform should include uh, the do's and don'ts uh, relative to some of these incidents because uh, if you put your ears on the ground we have some of these things coming up uh, once a while sometimes you see uh, you know big political actors coming around and they are giving access to uh, into certain areas which is the where the core business of the election is taking place should we countenance that we have chiefs also sometimes i am told that some of the chiefs can tell you that yes come to the palace and come and you know uh, give us opportunity to vote and all that but more often than not the people resist and then they will tell you that uh, please nana come down and then we can allow you to uh, you know uh, do your voting and then go away sometimes you have also uh, these political actors uh, chiefs and the opinion leaders coming and obviously everybody says that yeah let them vote first and all that all these things we have to take a critical look at that and then make sure that we don't create or we create an enabling environment where everybody will feel comfortable and compete so that when you lose you accept defeat and abide by the rules of the game mm. Uh, thank you very much. That is uh, Dr. Sasanti. He is a senior lecturer at the University of Ghana Political Science Department.